Dilemma zones are something we want to avoid creating if we were designing a traffic signal and the traffic signal timing. So starting with our intersection, this again is a signalized intersection. We're only looking at one approach to this intersection. And we all know just as drivers that there's some area when the when the indication for your approach turns yellow or amber that you can't safely stop. So if the if you're almost at the stop bar and the signal indication turns to yellow, you know you can't stop, you're going to proceed through. We also know that there is some distance further away from the signal that you can't safely proceed once you see that yellow indication. So we, we should have these two regimes, an area where you can't safely stop and those people would proceed through the intersection on yellow, an area where you can't safely proceed and those people should stop before entering the intersection. And you want likely a small gap there. We don't want too large of a gap between those areas because the issue you may have is that some drivers when they see the yellow they will stop no matter what. And then you have some drivers that are really going to be more aggressive and try to make it through the signal on that yellow. And if that gap is too large, you may have a, a mismatch between drivers' expectations where some drivers see that yellow indication as a reason that they need to stop no matter what. Other drivers may say they're going to try and proceed through. So we don't want too large of a gap there, but we main thing is we don't want these to overlap and create a dilemma zone. So now let's look at a scenario where we actually would create a dilemma zone. So again, we've got this area where you can't safely stop if you're too close to the stop bar, too close to the intersection, and the signal turns yellow. You can't safely stop. You need to proceed through. But if that overlaps with an area where you can't safely proceed, then you're going to create a dilemma zone. So that's an area where if you're in that area, if you're a vehicle in that area, you both cannot safely stop and you can't safely proceed, meaning that you can't make it through on yellow, you're gonna be going through the intersection on red. So we obviously do not want to design a signal that's gonna create this dilemma zone. So let's look at how we can calculate each of these components where you, the distance that you need to safely stop or to safely proceed. So looking at this distance x sub zero focused on the distance that you can't safely proceed. This is equal to 1.47 times the vehicle approach speed in miles per hour multiplied by the yellow interval in seconds. So that 1.47 is a conversion factor between those. So we've got to be very careful about the units miles per hour and seconds. Minus w, which is the width of the intersection and the vehicle length. So we need to add those two together plus one half of a sub one, that's the constant vehicle acceleration in feet per second squared, multiplied by y, which again, the yellow interval minus t sub passing, that's the driver perception time for safe passing, and that's squared. So that's our equation for x sub zero. And what, we're, what that distance actually is, is from the stop bar fully through that length. So, the area that we were looking at is in red, but the distance that we're calculating here is shown in this, this white arrow. Um, and so that's what that distance is gonna, gonna be. We'll see how that compares to our other distance and what comparison we're gonna make between those two values. Okay, so now we're looking at where you can't safely stop, and this is x sub c. And x sub c is equal to 1.47 times the vehicle approach speed in miles per hour, v multiplied by the T sub stop, which is the driver perception time for safe stopping, plus 1.075 times V squared over A sub two. Again, V is the vehicle approach speed in miles per hour, and A sub two is the maximum vehicle deceleration rate to stop. 1.47 and the 1.075 are conversion factors. So again, make sure we have the right units, miles per hour, seconds, and feet per second squared when we're using this equation. And again, this value from the stop bar moving upstream at the intersection for X sub C. So let's look at an example. So let's determine if an intersection approach with the following characteristics creates a dilemma zone for drivers. We're going to be given an approach speed of 35 miles per hour. We're told our perception time is 1.5 seconds. The yellow interval is 4 seconds. The vehicle length is 17 feet. 
the intersection width is 60 feet. The aggressive deceleration is given as 15 feet per second squared and an acceleration rate of 7.5 feet per second squared. So these are the values we're going to need for this problem. So we're going to start with our X sub C. We're going to plug in the values that we were given and we're going to find a distance or a length of 164.97 feet. Now we can also calculate X sub zero. We're going to plug in our given values and come up with a length or a distance of 152.24 feet. So again, going back to the X sub C, the speed 35 miles per hour, the T sub stop 1.5 seconds, and the deceleration rate of 15 feet per second squared for X sub zero, We've got the same values plus the yellow time of four seconds, the intersection width of 60 feet plus the vehicle length of 17 feet. We've got an acceleration rate of 7.5 feet per second squared. And I think that covers the, the various values that we're inputting in these. So just plugging in those, those given values here to find those two distances. And let's look at what this looks like on our intersection. Again, we've got the area where you can't safely proceed. We've got the area where you can't safely stop, 164.97 feet. The X sub zero that we calculated relates to the area where you can't safely proceed, and that is 152.24 feet. And if you have your X sub C greater than X sub zero, that's going to mean there's a dilemma zone present at this approach. So any vehicle that's between 152 and 165 feet from the intersection is going to be in a space, although it's pretty small, it's going to be in a space where when they see the yellow indication, they can't safely stop and they can't safely proceed. So we'd want to change the signal timing for this intersection so that we can remove this dilemma zone and don't create this issue for drivers.